Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I am in the big city of Baghdad, Kentucky, and I'm up here with my buddy Brian Block. I'm sure many of you guys probably recognize Brian. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel himself. Tell them about your channel. So, got a channel where I do a bunch of job shop repair type work and some high performance work as well. Uh, mostly all bigger stuff. I don't own a Bridgeport. Everything I've got is quite <laughs> a bit bigger than that. So, uh, we're here today, I'm going to use my 47,000 pound boring mill to <laughs> punch a couple of holes out in this steam chest off the uh, Stoker engine. Yeah, yeah, Stoker engine. Yep, so this is a cylinder head actually, and uh, if you've been following my restoration on this uh, Stoker engine, you'll know that uh, when we took this thing apart, there was some pitting on the inside of the cylinders. And the goal here is we just want to basically bore it out, get it cleaned up. Really, the, the, the size is not super critical, although we'll probably shoot for some nominal size to keep them uh, close to one another. But according to the specs, I need to get them out. I know I got 3 16 to a quarter of an inch that we can actually bore this thing out oversized and still be within the specifications without having to sleeve it. So, uh, and I think that we can get that pitting out without going over that size. We will have to make some oversized rings for it, but uh, we'll know more once we get in here and start cutting some metal. So anyway, we are getting it set up on the mill right now and uh, I'm gonna change camera shots and we'll kind of show you what we're doing, okay? All right, so we've got this set up on here and we wanna get a surface that we can reference off of for doing these bores. There's nothing machined externally on this, it doesn't look like. So they no doubt just set this up in one shot and put all the holes in it and that was all they did with it. Wasn't any need to do anything else, so they didn't bother to do anything else, but we're coming back doing reclamation work, so we need some place to start from. So what we're doing is set up here to indicate these bores. So we'll have to come down and find the center of each one and find the lowest point and try to get that the same between this one and this one. And as soon as we get that done, it'll take a face mill and just put a couple of flats on the bottom of this. And that way when we set it up on the table, the bores will be aligned and it'll be easy to just cut them through there where they belong. So we got that indicator zero. We went side to side on it to find the lowest number there. And we're going to raise it up now, sweep over to the other bore, and uh, do the same thing. We just want to make sure we got it set up on these blocks square. It back down in this side. Yeah, it's not touching right yet. Yeah. And I can tell it's not centered either. So. Uh, it's starting to bump on the indicator now. And he's got it on zero, a little past zero there. We're going to sweep it. Find the lowest spot or the highest spot there, however you want to call it. A lot more than one need for that old rusty bowl. All right, come back the other way. I think we're good. It's good? I think we're good. Now let's tighten it up. Tighten it up, yep. So we're just trying to put some flats on the, these four points here so that we can flip this thing 90 degrees and be sitting down on something. Not Just barely wanting to touch them because we got a raw, rough casting right now. We just need to have just tiny amount of area there to clean up on each from each of those four places and be in the same plane so that we can uh, bore this thing all right.
Yeah, so we just basically put some blocks back here behind it and ran it up against there. That's got it going square in this direction. It should be square in this direction, so we should be good. Yeah, and so we can check the vertical on it if I can get a place flat enough here to go across it. Try to drop on the board. Yeah, it looks good. It's not good. moving. Well, what I'm doing right now is trying to locate the original bore center. And the only part of it that's any good is out here at the end where the piston hadn't worn. So what I'm doing is taking a feeler gauge and going around my boring bar until I get an uh, equal amount in all four spaces. And that's about as good as it can do on a bore like this. It's got a lot of pitting and stuff. Uh, trying to sweep it in with an indicator just wind up if you're chasing your tail a lot as it drops in and out of the divots and valleys in there. It'll move a couple thousandths and you'll just keep bouncing back and forth trying to find center. But a feeler gauge helps to average that out because you're over a larger surface. So when you get that fitting good, it should be real close. So that's what I'm doing is just moving this around until it feels right. You can tell a lot by feel. Using your ears and using your feeling, a lot of times it gets you really close, a lot closer than you might have to think that you would get. A little high and a little to the right. Alright, so I've got this centered up on the bore using the feeler gauge method around the outside. And we're going to take a 5,000 cut through here just to see how close to center and how it's uh, behaving, lining up, and everything. So if we need to make any adjustments, we still can without anything being screwed up. So no need to get carried away and mess up this one off. Piece. So we'll just take it easy and take a light cut and we'll see where we're at. So it's probably just going to cut through about a half inch and stop just wherever it gets to where the piston wire is. I'm going to have to advance it some more. I hear it cutting. What's it look like? Yeah, it looks like it's definitely centered top to bottom. But it might need to go that way just a little bit. So I'm gonna it's, it, it sounded like it was cutting a little bit heavy on that side. I, I was noticing when I was listening to it. Milers, probably. This this particular Stoker engine is, is not the one that was original on that locomotive. It came from a, another museum. I don't know what engine it came off of, or I don't know any of the history. So yeah, there's it, there's no telling. Well, last night we finished boring out the first side over here. We're basically at seven and one sixteenth of an inch. So we took out a total of a sixteenth inch, which is one of the size increments in the book that they said you could order oversized rings for, which obviously we're not gonna be able to order and we're gonna have to have them made. But this is a, a, a bore size that was uh, uh, in the book as being an appropriate size for this uh, this machine, so or this uh, engine, so I think we're good there. 
uh, it cleaned up nicely and um, we probably took out a little bit more than was really needed to get it cleaned up. We wanted to hit that, that nominal size because that was one of the sizes that they, uh, they had listed. So next thing is we're going to move over to the other cylinder. I need to double check my blueprints. I think it's 12 and 3 quarter inches. Um, in an ideal world, we should just be able to roll over there with the DRO and uh, be right on, on uh, center. Unfortunately, uh, the DRO is giving us some trouble this morning, digital readout. So uh, we're going to figure out, we may have to use an indicator to, to get over there in a couple of steps. Brian's over here working on the, see if we can get the DRO back up and going. But we'll get it over there. We'll double check everything with the feeler gauge just to make sure that we're uh, lined up where we need to be and uh, bore the other cylinder out. So we got lucky and got the digital readout to read and we dialed it over uh, 12 and 3 quarter inches, which is what the blueprint says. And it's within just a thou or two measuring with the feeler gauge of where it needs to be. We're just going to let it rip. Uh, we don't know how good they had it to begin with when they did this job, probably no more than within five thousandths of print. Exactly. So, so, I mean, you have, have some tolerances. So I think we're good here. And um, anyway, we're ready. We're going to start boring this side. Fire it up and cut away. Let's do it. How much of a cut are you taking? Uh, I dialed in 10, so it should be taking 20. Okay. So we're measuring the bore to see how much more we've got to go to get this on size. This uh, dial bore gauge has been set to the correct size we're shooting for. Uh, we want this to come up to be a thousandths under the nominal bore so that Keith can hone this and uh, get the proper finish for the rings to seal in here. So we're just doing the best I can and getting this on size. So what I'm doing right now is seeing where we're at on that first cut so I know how much more to dial in, try and keep them all the same amount so it winds up taking the same amount in the end. So. On size, that's plus 10, 20, 21. So I'm going to go another 10, we'll split this in two cuts, and then that way if I need to adjust for the final, we can do that. Okay, we're making our second pass through here now, taking what, another 10 total? Yeah, after this it should be right at 10 to take out to hit the size that we want it to be. This should be our final pass going here. I think we got our bores to size. We're going to double check with the uh, uh, bore gauge here in just a second. But one point out here, if you look, there's quite a bit of pitting on this surface over here. We got a head gasket, or excuse me, a, a cylinder head that kind of cap that goes on the end there that we got to get a good seal. So I think we're going to flip this thing around and actually face the whole top of that side just so that we get a nice good surface that I can put a gasket on. But uh, that's going to be the next thing we do. But I think we got the boring done. Turn back around and square it up against the stop block. So I'll be square to that face back there. And now we're going to come in here and try and get some of this pitting out. Particularly, really just concerned about this half inch or so around this bore where it has to seal up. You can see this one here. 
the seal was in better shape and it protected it. So I don't know how much left to take off of this to get a decent surface there. Looks like at least probably 30 thousandths to get something to work with. It might take more. So uh, we'll take a pass across here and see what it is and dial in what I think it's gonna take to get the rest and then we'll work our way up, and get this faced off. A 15 thousandths cut here it looks like, right? Yep, plus a little. Let's see if we get lucky. I doubt it. I'd say it's gonna take more than that. I'd probably take twice that. Some of these pits in here are really deep. Yeah. That could not look too bad. I might get it. The worst pitting was right back in here, so. When it comes out the other side, we'll know. No. You might get lucky, man. Yeah, I think it's there. There's a couple little holes, but they look outside the gasket ring. Yeah, they're area. outside the gasket ring, so we're good. I think that'll do it. Well, there we go, guys. I think that we have this job done. So both cylinders have been bored out, checked. They're both about a thousandth undersized. One almost a thousandth, one almost, what, seven tenths? Seven tenths. Yeah, yeah, so, and I'm planning on putting a hone in here. We'll finish this to size with a hone, get it all smoothed up. Got the face here faced off, so that looks beautiful. Um, I think we're in good shape to take this thing on back. I've got done what we came here to do, and, uh, Brian? It's like a new part. Like so, a new part. So, it's long, be good for another 100 years. Long way toward uh, getting this <laughs> thing, uh, getting this, this was a major part of getting this job uh, where we can really start, really start working on getting this thing put back together. So, um, I still got some more work to do to it, but got a lot done. Brian, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you You're for- You're quite welcome. Letting me come and do this. And uh, we appreciate you using the big, uh, big uh, bore mill, horizontal bore mill. That's why I got it for, do jobs this size and bigger. This size and a lot bigger, <laughs> yeah. so uh, it was perfect for this. This actually right looked here. a lot bigger on camera. I thought it was bigger before <laughs> it got here. <laughs> I was almost going to set up the tailstock to bore through it, because I was like, that thing's probably two feet through there, but yeah. it's not, not near that big. It looks, camera adds 100 pounds. There. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to load this thing up, and I'm going to head back to Georgia, and uh, we'll see you guys down the road. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, Brian's channel as well. What's your YouTube channel? BC Block 02, or if that's too hard to remember, you can just Google this old barn shop, and it will cover the whole Google page, and uh, be bunches and bunches of videos there. There's over... I, there might be 400 videos on my channel now, so. Good deal. There's a, a lot you can watch, and it covers everything from machine work to farming to building this barn. Building this barn, building the bridge crane, and doing pretty much all of it by myself as a one man show. So it makes it a little more challenging and a little slower going, but I get it done. There you go. That'll be it, guys. Thanks for watching.